Welcome to Turner Classic Movies, everybody. I'm Ben Mankiewicz. For the next few hours, we're heading out west, and we're going through Spain. It's a triple feature of westerns, dubbed either the Dollars Trilogy or the Man with No Name Trilogy. Three pictures made by Italian director Sergio Leone with star Clint Eastwood. These are the international hits that elevated Eastwood to the top of Hollywood's A-list and made the genre affectionately known as spaghetti westerns famous. First, from 1964. A fistful of dollars. Eastwood plays the man with no name, a drifter who wanders into a small village and becomes mixed up in a family feud to take over the town. He soon realizes that if he plays his cards right, he can make it out of town much richer than when he arrived. Eastwood had some experience with westerns, but on television. He starred on the TV series Rawhide for several years before accepting Leone's offer to come to Europe and make a big screen western on a shoestring budget. Leone adapted the story from Japanese director Akira Kurosawa's Yojimbo. This marked the second time one of Kurosawa's films was remade into a western. John Sturgis remade Kurosawa's Seven Samurai four years earlier as The Magnificent Seven. But unlike Sturgis, Leone failed to get Kurosawa's permission. So in true western style, the two directors had a showdown, except it was in court, not in front of a saloon. But Kurosawa did shoot Leone dead. Can you imagine? Kurosawa did win, though. Fortunately, the experience did not sour Leone on the characters. He was determined to demonstrate that the film's success was more than just a lucky break. So he went on to make two more westerns featuring Clint Eastwood as the man with no name, one in each of the next two years, for a few dollars more in 1965, and The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly in 1966, both of which we're showing tonight. All three movies in the trilogy were released in the U.S. during 1967 in January, May, and December. With each film, Leone further honed his style of shooting wide expanses of sparse landscapes combined with extreme close-ups of characters. Released in Italy in 1964, this is the film that started it all. Clint Eastwood in A Fistful of Dollars. Clint Eastwood took ownership of the man with no name as soon as he accepted the part. He picked out his wardrobe before he even left Los Angeles, including the black jeans, the hat, and those trademark black cigars. As for the dialogue, Eastwood felt that the character explained himself too much in the original screenplay, so he made him more economical in his speech, therefore making him more mysterious and arguably more compelling. Eastwood enjoyed working with director Sergio Leone on these spaghetti westerns, but he didn't really believe Leone knew anything about the West, saying of Leone, he's just a good director. Up next, Eastwood is back for the second installment in the Dollars Trilogy, and this time he's joined by one of the great movie villains, Lee Van Cleef. Hi there, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Welcome to Turner Classic Movies. We're all about a mythic anti-hero tonight, a man with no name who is instantly recognizable to classic movie fans around the world. He's the character played by Clint Eastwood in the spaghetti westerns of Italian director Sergio Leone's Dollars Trilogy from the mid-1960s. We just presented the first film in the trilogy, A Fistful of Dollars, from 1964, and we're following the man with no name into his second film appearance, the aptly titled For a Few Dollars More, released in Italy in 1965 and in the U.S. two years later. All three films in the trilogy were released in the States in 1967. If you're paying attention to the dates, you realize these films were made essentially one after the other. When Leone completed the first of the three, the Italian studio financing the project instantly loved what it was seeing and wanted production on the next film to begin immediately. Eastwood had not even seen the first film when he was approached to make the sequel. Once he saw it, he knew it was something special. It didn't matter that the print he saw was in Italian with no subtitles. Visually, Eastwood knew the film was substantive. In this sequel, for a few dollars more, Eastwood plays a bounty hunter who teams up with another tough guy, played by Lee Van Cleef. Together, they plan to take down a notorious outlaw, and we gradually learn that their motivations may not be as in sync as they originally seemed. For a few dollars more was an even bigger hit than A Fistful of Dollars, noted for its symbolism and flashbacks to facilitate the story, something Leone would use effectively in his later masterpiece, Once Upon a Time in the West. For a few dollars more, was also praised for its unusual score, written by a fledgling Italian composer by the name of Ennio Morricone. The first film in the trilogy was scored by Dan Savio, but that was just an Americanized pseudonym for Ennio Morricone. Here it is from 1965, Clint Eastwood, in For a Few Dollars More. You might have noticed that some of the characters in the film referred to the man with no name as Manco or Manco. 
In the scripts for all three films in Sergio Leone's Dollars trilogy, the man with no name actually did have names assigned to him. He's named Joe in the original script for A Fistful of Dollars and Blondie in The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. There's some disagreement among critics and film scholars on whether he's called Manco or Manco in this second film. Some think Il Manco could be short for Il Monaco, which in Italian means the monk, which is consistent with his quiet style, the poncho he wears, and a supposed tradition of gunmen with religious names in spaghetti westerns. But in both Italian and Spanish, respectively, Manco and Manco mean one-handed, which would also be appropriate since the character seems to do everything except shoot with his left hand. Bottom line, the man with no name sounds better than either Manco or Manco or Jim or Blondie. Up next, the third and what many contend is the best film in the Dollars trilogy and the only one of the three not to have the word Dollars in the title. Hi there, thanks for joining us on TCM. I'm Ben Mankiewicz. We are coming to the end of our trilogy of films featuring Clint Eastwood as the man with no name. Up next, the third and final installment in the Dollars trilogy, all three of them directed by Sergio Leone. This is also the picture widely considered the finest of the three. Released in Italy in 1966, here in the States in 67, when all three of the films were released, this is the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's the story of three men searching for gold during the U.S. Civil War. Even though the story is set in America, like the other films in the trilogy, The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly is a European import shot in Spain by an Italian director with a largely Italian crew. As a result, all three pictures in the trilogy came to be affectionately referred to as spaghetti westerns. Clint Eastwood heads the cast, playing essentially the same character he played in the previous two films. The squinting, poncho-wearing, thin cigar-smoking, sharp-shooting drifter who always seems to knock off the bad guys and ride away with the cash. Joining Eastwood are Lee Van Cleef, who also starred in For a Few Dollars More, and Eli Wallach. The three men in that order, Eastwood, Van Cleef, and Wallach, represent the good, the bad, and the ugly. And they're the only actors in the film to deliver their lines in English. The supporting players speak in their native languages, Italian or Spanish, with their dialogue later dubbed into English for this American release from United Artists. Eastwood, always a savvy businessman as well as an actor, suggested the studio also purchase the film rights to the first two movies and then release them in order, which UA did in January, May, and December of 1967. Those first two films were already huge hits around the world, which made the trilogy an easy sell in the States. From 1966, with one of the most memorable scores of any Western, composed by the incomparable Ennio Morricone, The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. With each film he made, Sergio Leone grew as a director, and with each success, his vision for his films expanded in size and scope. After the success of the first two movies in the Dollars trilogy, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly had the biggest budget of the three films, a much longer script, and it required much more time to shoot. This graded Clint Eastwood, who didn't like to spend more time than necessary on a film set. He still doesn't. This was the last film Eastwood and Leone did together, although there were no hard feelings. Leone went on to make a couple of classic epics, Once Upon a Time in the West and Once Upon a Time in America, without Eastwood. And Eastwood, he did okay too, becoming one of the biggest stars and finest filmmakers of his generation, still working today, probably literally working today, though not shooting any more takes than he must. Up next, director Sergio Leone is back, this time calling the shots in a mythical Mediterranean adventure that stars Rory Calhoun and Leia Massari.